For this video, I wanted to try something different and actually try and show you in video format my breeding process for my Molloy curbensis. I have had these particular fish since October of 2020. We actually started with a trio, but unfortunately the female of this pair you're seeing actually singled out the other female and was extremely aggressive towards her where I actually had to remove that female in an attempt to save her life. From there, a few weeks went by, I tried to reintroduce the, the, the second female with uh, no luck. The male and the female ganged up on her and unfortunately she perished. So what you're seeing here is the female the male chose uh, attempting to spawn in a 10 gallon tank. And what you see floating in the water column is baby brine shrimp in an effort to feed them in an effort like to really fatten them up to allow them to spawn successfully. Now we attempted to do this in the 10 gallon tank uh, to no true beneficial avail. As you can see in this time lapse I was able to get, uh, the male and the female are constantly in and out of the cave, very interested in each other, very fired up. The coloration is incredible. In my opinion, that is truly what sets these fish apart from other curbenzis is the purple and the yellow that they show. So I did have some successful behavior in this 10 gallon tank. Um, as you can see, the female has covered the front of the cave or the coconut hut uh, with the substrate, which shows that there is some successful spawning. Now in the 10 gallon tank, I did have two successful spawns. Uh, one was eggs, but as you can see here, we actually got a second spawn to wigglers. But what I was not prepared for is that the male and the female actually ate their eggs. But moving forward here, uh, warning, I do have Tourette's. You're gonna hear my ticks, my sniffing, all that. But I wanna show you how excited I was when we found the first true successful spawn of these fish on a members only live stream. So if you're wearing headphones, I warn you, my Tourette's kick in. She wiggles and waggles at him. Do you see all the fish? <clears throat> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Oh my gosh! I, oh my gosh! Yes! 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 I am so glad Louis is here! <laughs> Guys! We did it! We did it! I'm probably waking my daughter right now. My wife's gonna be texting me like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh! Guys! <laughs> this Molloy Crabenzis fry! Was yes! The 20 long was the right answer. Lewis is like, hey, look, look at my cash. She's dancing. He's like, no, look at all the fish, you <laughs> Oh my gosh. We finally did it. <clears throat> and it's a member's live stream too, so you guys are the first ones to see it. Yes. I shouldn't be this happy. Like, how long have we had these fish now? <coughs> I can tell you, Three it's months. it's it's in my phone. I just can't access, but I can't access it. <coughs> Three months or so. <coughs> Quite some time. So we had them. I had them up here, and we had. I had two spawns. One they had eggs, ate them. Second one they had fry, ate them. So then I decided to move them down here into a bigger tank. You think I should pull the male out? She seems to be worried about the male, so... Oh my gosh! We did it! We did it! We did it! Yes! Oh, that makes us... Yes! <laughs> so I shared that portion of the live stream I did with for the members only. It was with Lewis. Just to show the true, raw emotion I had when we successfully spawned these. And I'm very happy that I caught that on camera because it had been months of effort put into these fish, 
But you can see now the female is successfully and very carefully raising the fry. We did remove uh, the male the night that I found the fry. But we have a good spawn now. It's amazing to watch this female herd the fry around. You can see they are picking at... Uh, in essence, rotting food or food that's deteriorating in the water column that's on top of their coconut hut. And that's the reason why I do feed heavy in this tank right now is I want to have the fry to have plenty of access to you know microorganisms, uh, small particles of food, whatever it's going to take to raise these fry to adulthood. So we are feeding things like baby brine shrimp, uh, extreme nano pellets, very fine crust up flake, uh, golden pearls from brine shrimp direct, uh, the San Francisco Bay uh, freeze dried cyclops. So a lot of micro foods going into the tank right now and I am purposely letting the female raise the fry until they are to a size that I feel comfortable pulling them to a you know, fry system, the, the, a tray to grow them out further. But I also making sure to feed things like small frozen foods, uh, larger flake foods to allow the female to also gain the nutrition that she needs. So there's a quick clip of me feeding a spoonful of the extreme nano pellets. Now you're probably going to say that's a lot of food going into the water column. But again, I, I, I need the fry to have plentiful access to food and the food that they can eat. So what they can't eat right away will continue to break down into the water column to allow them to feed over extended periods of time. So I did find that once I moved the pair into the 20 gallon long, offered numerous huts and hides for the male and the female, I found success in spawning. So I do have some plants in this tank, but I think ultimately it was the larger water volume, the larger surface area of the tank and allowing the male female to have hides that they could protect. So I angled the openings of the coconut huts towards the corners of the tank, uh, allowing the fish to have a smaller area that they had to defend. Now, I, they were alone in the 10 gallon tank, but I think just with the larger size tank, actually proved very beneficial in spawning them. So I will continue to keep them in the 20 gallon long. And once I have removed the fry, I will reintroduce the male uh, and definitely keep an eye on them, you know, as I do not want anything bad to happen. But I, tr I wanted to share with you the accomplishment of breeding what I truly think is the most beautiful Kribenza species in the hobby. And I am, after months of working on this, we finally successfully spawned these fish. And again, I'm very happy I caught my reaction on camera. So if you have any questions of my process in breeding them, or what I have found worked for me, please leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.